Welcome everybody back to Red Shadow Forge and I'm Dakota Bell. Um, today's video is going to be a little bit different than our normal videos, but it is winter time. We're almost smack dab in the middle of December and I just wanted to kind of put this video out there to get everybody who maybe kind of overlooks this stuff or overthinks it, uh, get you guys thinking about it so that you guys can stay prepared during the winter time as well. Um, I do come from a military background where they do a lot of training and a lot of preparedness and stuff like that for the winter time just as well as summertime, a lot of safety stuff to think about. Uh, I just wanted to kind of talk to some stuff, talk to you guys about some stuff that I do in the wintertime to keep my vehicle prepared in case something happens. So this isn't gonna be a super in-depth video, but I'm just gonna show you what I have in my vehicle winter preparedness bag. So if you like it and you're thinking about it, you can get yourself a winter preparedness bag and maybe do the same thing or at least this should give you guys an idea of what kind of things you guys want to put in your bag just to keep yourself prepared just in case. So actually before I open up the bag, I'm going to show you the things that I always keep in my vehicle, um, whether it's car, truck, whatever, I keep it in my vehicle just in case year round. So the first thing is going to be one of these little shovels. Um, in case you get stuck, I especially keep one in the car because it's front wheel drive, which is usually typically better for like snow and things like that. But uh, in case you ever get stuck, this could be something that you can use to help dig yourself out. So I always keep that in my car. I also always keep a tire iron or a tire square, whatever you want to call them, uh, so that I can replace the tire if need be, pull it off, and I keep a jack and jack stands. And I always make sure that the jack that I'm using is at least rated for what the vehicle's weight capacity is. You don't want to use too small of a jack on a truck or something that weighs way too much for that jack. So keep safe. Make sure you're using the right weighted jack. Then the most important thing, in my opinion, the number one most important thing is going to be jumper cables because there's a lot of different conditions that your vehicle can run into where you have a no start condition. Hey, kitty cat. Um, it could be a number of things, but I know typically uh, some of us get pretty bad about forgetting to turn our lights off. Maybe the dome lights or whatever aren't automatic. Your battery goes dead. You just need a jump. So it's always important to have your own jumper cables. Don't rely on someone else. Always rely on yourself. Then lastly, on the things I always keep in my vehicle, water. Uh, this is just some store brand uh, jug of water. Um, I also keep a 32 pack of the smaller bottles <clears throat> in there as well. I always keep that just in case I need a little bit of water for something. This can also be used as a temporary quick fix in your radiator if you run out of coolant. Um, it will not last a long time, but it will, it should help you get from point A to at least point A.5 point or something like not all the way to B, but uh, it could get you a little bit further, maybe to a service station or something like that in your radiator if you have enough water to put in there. So let me go ahead and jump into the bag. Now this is the stuff that I just keep in here for winter time. There's a few tools that are in here that you can keep in your vehicle year round. It's not a bad idea, but for this bag's purposes or this winter preparedness bag, I just got this together for the winter time. Now the bag, I'll talk about that first. The bag I picked up at a store called Menards. Um, and it's kind of like a, a Home Depot, that kind of store. Um, but this bag was actually on sale. I got it for about $20 and it has been used for about a year now, and I usually keep it pretty jam-packed. I have this bag packed, and then we also use um, some of our bug out bags are like these as well, which if you're interested, I'm gonna be doing some videos on that in the future about what is a bug out bag, what is it used for, what goes in it, things like that. Let me jump back to this. So the first thing I have on here hanging on the bag is a whistle. It's a very high-pitched whistle, but it can be heard from very far away. <clears throat> so in the case of like a blizzard or a a very severe snowstorm, that could be something that comes in handy if you're trying to get attention. All right. Recondition this real quick. <laughs> Stay. Okay. So, in this first little bag, like I said, these don't, this is kind of like an emergency, well, it is an emergency situation. So, I didn't need any like super tough, durable bags to be you know, holding this stuff. It's just in case I have to use it, it's there. Just to kind of help organize it a little bit. So first thing we're looking at is a flashlight. It's got two different light settings on it. You click it once, it's a little bit brighter. You click it twice, it's a little bit dimmer, but either one can be used. <clears throat> a pair of scissors for any case that you might need them. 
if you don't have a pocket knife or something, which I also have one of those, I'm a very firm believer in redundancy. So if you have one knife, just for utility purposes, if you need to cut something or use it as a tool, you should have a second one in case the first one breaks. So I do have another pocket knife to go along with the scissors. I have some tape. Now this is just a roll of electrical tape, um, and it's actually kind of a generic brand. It's one of those last minute, worst case scenarios, you can use it. If you have to use a lot, use a lot. Um, I would recommend, and I don't have it in here now, but I would recommend throwing in a roll of duct tape. Um, duct tape can fix hoses and things like that on your vehicle if they burst, and that, again, will get you to the next service station, hopefully. So this is a torch lighter, just a small lighter that's a little bit more reliable, holds a little bit more fuel than one of these, but like I said, redundancy. So there's another little lighter, and then matches. Rule of three on those. For the for fire starting, I always go with the rule of three. So in all of my bags and things like that, I will have three different ways to start a fire to keep warm because fire is so important. Um, these are two different size screwdrivers. I've got a flathead and a Phillips. <clears throat> and then I've also got even smaller ones because um, this is, the car has some smaller connections and smaller screws and things like that. So I carry two different sizes of screwdrivers. A pair of pliers, you can never go wrong with having a pair of these in any kind of emergency situation. They can be used for lots of stuff. And I went with needle nose pliers so that they could be multiple, multi-purpose basically. Uh, I mean, even if you had a splinter, you can use those because the tip is small enough, you could pull out a splinter. So it's just another good tool to have. Um, I've got a medium size or a small, whatever you want to call it, um, adjustable wrench. I keep one of these and a larger one in my bag. I'll show you that one here in a minute. But instead of carrying around a whole socket set and you know, <clears throat> things like that, you can just carry one of these around and this should get the job done at least, you know, for a quick fix. And then I also have a headlamp. It's got three different light settings, lights up the center, lights up the sides, and then lights up all three. So this stuff, I got these for about $2 again at Menards it's one of those things where they had just a big bin of them for sale and I was like you know what sure um, I've got two of those pretty much everywhere um, just because I know they're cheaper um, a lot of these things if you're gonna be putting your life on the line and you really you're gonna be dependent on it you should probably spend the extra little bit of cash and get a good quality one that you know for a fact is gonna last and hold up but like I said, I, this is just kind of a redundancy thing. I've got the headlamp if I need it. I've also got a flashlight. And along with those things, you should pack batteries as well. So this right here is just a really simple medical kit. Um, in case I've got some like big bandages on here. Um, I've got chapstick because this is a winter kit. Dries your skin out. That could help keep your lips moist, moisturized, whatever you need. Um, I've got some like medical tape in there. And then this is the big one for me. I put some generic brand of um, Excedrin, basically. It's just headache relief. Cold weather tends to give me a headache. So that's one of those things that is personalized to me. I know that I get headaches in the cold if I'm out too long. And if I'm stranded somewhere waiting for a tow or waiting for another ride to pick me up or something like that, or even worse, I don't know when I'm gonna be able to get unstranded. Um, if I get a headache, that's gonna make my life a little bit easier if I can alleviate that headache. This right here, uh, super primitive. It's just a can of um, what hearty bean and ham soup. Um, just, I don't know how long, if I were to get stranded, I don't know how long I would be stranded. So I went ahead and just threw in something to eat. It's got some good protein in it. It's got some calories to it. So that should at least sustain me for a while if I'm stuck for a very long time. <clears throat> socks. You learn this in the military. Uh, you can never change your socks. Too many times um, I put the socks in there because a this is winter this is a winter preparedness kit so if you're too cold you could add a second layer of socks or even smarter in my opinion would be to just swap them out you could you're cold your feet sweat because they're tied up in boots or whatever have you and then if you have to get out and you try to get your vehicle unstuck and you're in the mud or snow you get your boots wet your shoes wet whatever you need to change your socks because sitting there with wet feet can actually cause more harm than good uh, and nobody likes wet feet especially in the cold a good thick sharpie um, this is a new sharpie don't throw in an old used one because odds are it's going to start writing and then you it'll just burn up on you so uh, i got a, a thick sharpie in here so that i can write whatever I need to write. Uh, there's also a notepad in there that that goes with. Um, I threw in a thick pair of work pants. No, I call them work pants. Um, it's just to add another layer of warmth. If you're stuck and your car won't start, you're not gonna be getting any warmer because that heat will just dissipate after a while. Um, 
So an extra pair of pants could be beneficial. Or if you ever have to leave your vehicle, which is not recommended, if you ever have to leave your vehicle, you can add at least an extra layer on. This is the bigger adjustable wrench that I was talking about. Um, let's see. <clears throat> oh, and look at that. There's the notebook that I was talking about. Um, you can write notes on what time you crashed or what time you got to wherever you were. Write your name, your information, your address, your phone number, any of that stuff. Um, who to contact. If you have to leave your vehicle, you know, use some of the tape and secure this to the inside window of your vehicle or something like that so it won't get damaged. Um, that's just another emergency contact that could be used in efforts to help find you. Now I put these in here, these are just some tapered candles. They were a dollar or, yeah, a dollar at the dollar store basically. Um, I wouldn't exactly recommend tapered candles, uh, especially if it's gonna be a high wind environment, but I just threw them in there so that you guys would think to put candles in your stuff. They could be tea lit, tea light candles or, you know, pillar, like the round big ones, um, or even just a scented candle, it doesn't matter. Um, but something to help provide a little bit of warmth and light. You'd be amazed that if, if this car was stranded and I had, a decent sized candle inside a it's gonna light up the whole car even if I'm covered in snow but B will actually help provide a lot of warmth um, and then if you were able to I would definitely crack a window for a little while let some of that exhaust out that smoke and stuff. Um, but anyway the last thing actually I'll save that one for the last thing I come in the side pockets real quick <clears throat> now if your vehicle is still operating or if you still have some battery life and you're able you have uh, cell cell service or whatever you're able to make an emergency phone call but your phone's almost dead like every horror movie ever um, carry an extra battery charger or not battery charger but an extra car phone charger for your your cell phone so that you can use that to be contacted or to contact emergency help if need be and then over here oh i should have thrown these first if you're outside and you have to do any mechanical work to make a minor repair or anything like that, you're gonna want some gloves. Again, these are just a random pair of gloves. I wouldn't exactly recommend these particular gloves. Um, pick these up at Walmart actually, but these are great for like construction jobs and building and things like that. They've got the rubber on the knuckles, but again, they're not like super warm. So I would recommend putting a winter pair of gloves in here, along with not exactly a Christmas hat, but a nice, thick, sturdy, warm winter hat. You gotta keep your head warm. You'd be amazed at how much heat actually escapes your head. I was bald for a long time, so I learned that the hard way. Um, lastly, worst case scenario, if you have to give up you know, uh, efforts on working on the car and, and you're, you're camping out in your car, you need a blanket of some kind. This one is actually a sleeping bag rated for up to 20, or down to 20 degrees. So it's not the coldest bearing sleeping bag you can buy, but it's, pretty good for at least my region again uh, you know you'd have to think about the weather where you're at if you're in California and the weather's a little bit different than it is in Illinois obviously you're not gonna want this kind of sleeping bag you're gonna want something different so um, some of it some of this stuff is modifiable and definitely uh, should be catered towards you and your needs and your interests but this is just some things that I do to help stay prepared just in case for winter time uh, there's a ton of these videos going around on YouTube. Um, if you're really, if this kind of sparks an interest, like, wait a second, that's a good idea. I want to get prepared for stuff. I want to get prepared for winter or summer or whatever the case may be. Um, let me know. We'll talk about it more. Uh, this is something that I'm very passionate about. I don't like to be caught, you know, unprepared for stuff. So I take this very seriously. So if you guys would like to talk more about it, please let me know. Um, and coffee is the same as well. So we love talking about stuff like this. Please let us know what you think in the comments and uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I hope that this sparked something inside you so you guys get prepared as well for the winter time. Get yourself a winter preparedness bag in your vehicle. Thank you guys for watching.